Cursor just dropped version 2.0 and at first glance, it looks completely different, but uh, it's a lot of the same stuff. Let me explain. They've got two modes now. There's an agent mode and an editor mode, right? Editor mode is your standard VS code, what you're used to. At the file tree on the left, it's got the code in the center and over the right, it's got the AI pane, just like we're used to, right? Same as VS Code, same as Cursor 1. And then Cursor 2 adds this new mode, Agents Mode. And in Agents Mode, look at this. You've got a big old chat box in the middle and a pane on the left. It's a lot less IDE and it's a lot more chat GPT. Cursor 2 is like rearranging your living room furniture and then telling everyone, I bought a new house. It's the perfect mode for the programmer that gets overwhelmed when they see code. But it turns out Cursor needed all the agent space it can get because in Cursor 2, you can launch eight agents in parallel from a single prompt. It's like your own little AI LAN party. All the computers are connected to a local area computer network. Games like Counter-Strike and Tour of Duty come into their own. Each one runs their own Git work tree so their changes won't affect each other. I don't know why you would sign yourself up for reviewing eight different AI pull requests, but hey, you have your hobbies, I have mine. They also announced their own agent model called Composer. They say it's almost as smart as GPT-5 and Claude Sonnet, but four times faster and better at working in large code bases. They called it Composer, but honestly, I tried and it can't make music for shit. They also put a browser tab directly into Cursor that agents can access. Now your LLM can click, type, and even take screenshots. Because it can kind of see the website, it opens up a lot of UI work that was previously difficult for LLMs. So this means they put Chrome into Cursor, which is VS Code, which is Electron, which is Chrome. They put Chrome into Chrome. Cursor even added a new voice input mode, so you can finally build features out without pausing Mario Kart. All in all, Cursor 2 has shown us that we are past the era of make the logo bigger, and now we are into the age of make the LLM chat box just take up the whole screen. But if you want your content to be just right and stay on brand, you need Prismic, our sponsor. Prismic is a headless page builder that deeply integrates with Next.js, Nuxt, and SvelteKit. You create reusable page components, and Prismic takes care of things like type generation and API connections. Plus, Prismic's MCP server and other AI tools make development faster than ever. It's the best way to keep your content team moving quickly while keeping everything consistent and on brand. Get started at prismic.io and tell them a video sent you. Thanks, Prismic. Figma, the ex Adobe just can't get over, announced a bunch of design system features. They showed extended collections, which let you build a base design system, then extend it for each brand or product you have. It's like inheritance in programming, but for like spacing and typography. Now you can rant to your designer about prototypal inheritance and they have to listen. Next, they introduced slots. Slots are placeholders inside components where you can drop whatever you want. You can make a card component, add a slot, and then throw in a photo or a list. Okay, first inheritance, now composition. At what point does Figma just become a JavaScript framework? And I am no coder. And this is why I joined Figma. Figma also announced an awesome new feature called Check Designs. It looks through your file for hard-coded values and suggests variables from your design system instead. It's Figma's polite way of saying, I don't know where you were raised, but around here, we use design systems. We don't just throw in colors and spacing values willy-nilly. Use the system. It'll help keep your colors, spacing, and typography consistent. It's like a design systems lawyer to argue with my designer on my behalf. Figma's also coming out with Code Connect UI. It lets you link your Figma components directly to your code components in GitHub. You create a file, import Figma's NPM package, and detail how your code maps to the design. If you're familiar with Storybook, it's a very similar concept. Now your designer can judge your code while you judge their layer naming. It's mutually assured destruction. My name is Alex Trost. This has been The Callback. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Prototypal? 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 Prototypal. Now you can rant to your designer about prototypal inheritance, and they have to listen.